Welcome back to One Piece Anime Review Episode number 98. This is our review in the 886th episode of the anime. The Uproarious Holy Land, Princess Shirohoshi is being targeted. And the 933rd, 43rd chapter of the manga, Smile. And it's all capitalized. I'll talk about that one. That one is actually pretty interesting. Just interesting this one. This episode, surprisingly, it does cover, start covering a chapter... 907 this episode, but here's something I thought was quite weird. Now, normally they, what they do for this series is that when they, when they do like half of an episode, they cover the first half in one episode, the second half in the following episode. This one, they actually swapped it around. I thought this was weird. Yeah, though there there is a story reason for this. Now, this episode only covers pages 11 to 17 of 907. Despite the fact, yes, this episode does cover some pages of the manga. Hey. There is some stock footage in the episode, yes. This arc is not worth it for using a ton of stock footage. That was basically reminiscing of, well, what's been happening throughout the series, because this year is the 20th version of the anime, so why not throw some stock footage in there? This episode, the stock footage you from here is from Edo's Lobby. Those bit highlights like Luffy being crap out of Rob Lucci. We see Zoro's fight with Kaiku. And we see Robin briefly in the arc. She gets like a couple lines from the flashback. But not luckily for something the entire arc. The entire arc was, was freaking long. It's Like this arc along with Water 7 took up, I believe it was, off the top of my head, I believe this took up like the eighth season of the sh like. Water 7 took up the 8th season of the show, and the ninth season was made up, made, up, made up of the Eros Lobby and the post Eros Lobby arc. Mm -hmm. Yep. And of course, there's some flashbacks up on Fishman Island, which I'll get to later on. The episode starts off basically with Sarah Ho should be taken to slavery by one of the idiot celestial dragons named St. Charles. And you watch this episode like, yeah, this guy's going to get a punch in the face really bad. Like, I can't hope it. Can you please this guy get punched in the face? He's taking a beloved character into slavery. And Vivi, Vivi, Rebecca, Sai, Leo, they all want to do something, but they can't because CP0 shows up completely out of nowhere. And we see Rob Lochi making his first appearance in Dress Rosa, along with Kaku. Kaku, I think the last time he showed was back in, in, in Eros Lobby. Because either Rob Lochi was seen briefly in Dress Rosa, Kaku wasn't. Not that I remember, no. Oh, I should point out that CP0, the whole thing with the, the central P, the CP stuff, yeah, it, it's a government organization that's under direct control of the world government. Their job is to basically cover up the messes that started by the Celestial Dragons. Oh, and also, they're at the Celestial Dragons' beck and call. Yes, they're basically hired goons for the government. Yes. That is essentially what they're, they're, they do. And for some reason, this Celestial Dragon named Saint Char Saint Saint Carlos, he really wants to take Serhoshi. Despite the fact she's a royal. She is the daughter of the king. She's a member of the royal family. Why the heck would you do this? Yes, and basically this one Celestial is risking all-out war with Fishman Island. No, they call it Red Coat Kingdom, but I still refer to Fishman Island. Yeah, he's risking all-out war with them. Yes. Like, I'm sure the Navy itself probably think that this war is completely stupid. They probably just pass on it and just let Shrek and buy him. So basically, the Fishman will probably destroy him and pretty much all the land he owns here in Mary Jo. Mm hmm. Yep. So, of course, that's when the flashback was at where Eros Lobby comes in. Yep. And those would be curious what happened to the rest of CP9. Well, most of them basically were, thrown, were basically thrown out of the... They basically were... Let's just say they were kicked out of the government. And pretty much with the exception of one. With the exception of two here and the masked man, who's basically appearance based on, based on uh, Mankind, a.k.a. Mick Foley. With the exception of these three, everybody else pretty much from what I heard, I think either went to jail or they simply just were just fired. Yes. Yeah, and I I gotta appreciate Vivi for basically stepping in, trying to help 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 Sir Hoshi. Even Rebecca basically tries, but Sai but Leo tries to go out the course. He's stopped by Rob Lucci, or Sai wants to go out to him too. And 
Leo's like, she's the boss's friend. I'm going to take him out. <laughs> yeah, and then, and basically, we have King Neptune, who's basically fuming at seeing this. His daughter being put in chains. Yes, he really wants to hit this, this particular Celestial Dragon. And then, before he can chance to do that, we see a club smack this jerk in the face. A big metal, a big pat with spikes on it. And who just happens to be the one who hits him? Why it's now Celestial Dragon. And this particular one is a relative of Doflamingos. Same, same family name. And this is actually the same one who visited Fishman Island 10 years before the events of the series. Which, wow, that is actually something. And I didn't remember this from the mangas. Because, yeah, I was really... Because I had read this chapter, like, last year. And I love this part of the manga. Of this guy getting, getting hit in the face with... Well, in the manga, if I remember, I think he got punched in the face. But I remember he gave it a freaking club. But, yeah. Change to a club probably makes more sense than being punched in the face. Yeah, and, of course, he apologizes. And he tells the guy, release her. And tell CP0, you, you, your, your job's finished here. Go. Go away. You may go now. And, of course, CP0 has no choice but to obey because Celestial Dragons are technically their bosses. And even though, yes, he did take out Flesh Celestial Dragon, but they can't legally do anything to him, so they have no choice but to go. Yep. So, yeah. <laughs> yep. And, of course, he apologized for it. But we get a little chance of what happened with him in next week's episode. Yeah. But this overall was really damn good episode. And, though, next week we're going to visit up with Big Mom. Yeah, she makes a return. First time since the end of Fishman Now. And, though, as for what happened to Jean Bay, the Sun Pirates, or even German 66, completely unknown. Not even the manga bars to tell exactly what happened to these people. Okay, first you have a cover story with Nico Robin knitting. Yep, just knitting. All right, that's the cover story. Chapter holds up pretty much where last week's episode, the last chapter left off, which came out two weeks ago, where the Shogun is basically upset, basically by seeing the treasure being robbed and stuff being stole. Basically, lots of talking, but we've seen like a bunch of our characters, and we see Zoro basically seeing. Um, seeing that this little girl's father basically has been executed and and of course there's a bunch of talk and we see the Straw Hats minus Luffy and Brooke mind you and they're just basically walking see everything Luffy you see him for a couple pages we see Kaido for like uh, one page yeah first time Kaido's appeared in this particular thing uh, I think the last time I appeared was back, um, I'm trying to remember it, I think it was back in chapter, I think it was like 918, so it's been like 20, at least about 12 chapters since his last appearance. Yeah, he makes his one cameo appearance, and that's that. Of course, we had the female, we had the, the, the old uh, female ninja basically crying over what happened with the guy, and they talk about the smiles. Yeah, the artificial... The artificial devil fruit. We see also a flashback to what happened in Punk Hazard, with of course seeing Caesar Clown making his kind of his first appearance since the end, since his last since his last time we show up in the series, which back in Whole Cake, which it's still completely unknown exactly what happened to him. It's implied he was killed at some point, but it's unknown exactly what happened to him. And we see a brief flashback of Kaido. But that's in flashback. Presley definitely appears for like one panel. And we see like a smile factory. I believe this is the one from Dress Rosa, if not mistaken. But the place was blown up by Frankie. And we see like a brief image of Caesar Clown, Kaido, and Dolph Mingo. And of course, like with stuff to come. A lot of talk in this episode. And of course, we see the little girl, Tycho. Basically, sees her father's his mess. He doesn't think he's dead. And everybody's like about to attack the little girl. And then all of a sudden, Sanjay, Sanji and Zoro show up to save her. And they're both like, what? <laughs> yeah, they both look at her, what? Yeah. 
yeah, I, I saw this ending of this chapter. I'm like, wow, that's actually quite interesting. I did not expect that. And of course, I wouldn't be surprised. The chapter opens with these two. It's like, yeah, so I'm just saying, what are you doing here, Moss Head? And, and of course, Zora probably refers to him as, I'm not, for, I'm not going to say that what he says in the manga, S.C. Cook. Yeah, I'm not going to say what the word is. He actually calls him. Yeah, he first is Anjali, not by his name, but by this, his name, because he thinks he's a bad cook, even though he's actually really good at cooking. But yeah, it seems like this whole chapter, just a bunch of talking. People just really want to do something, but they can't do anything. And then we have this good cliffhanger. Yes. And luckily enough, there is going to be a new chapter next week. So it won't be another break like it was just... Yeah, it's like, okay... We come back from break last, I think about two weeks ago, we came back from break, and then we have another break, and then we come back two weeks ago, we, find, we finally get a chance to resume this manga again. But my guess is this particular thing, I think it might go to 640, uh, 946 before we have the next break. Mm -hmm. But if, if the ending did not happen, I would have probably gotten this chapter an 8.5, but because of the ending, it's getting a 9 out of 10. Yep. Because it's somewhat of a okay chapter it seems as though this the chapter's movie sort of a snail's pace and then we had this awesome ending to this chapter mm -hmm. but what i do have one criticism about it is the fact we have luffy the main protagonist of the series appearing for like two pages actually here's like two panels kaido appears for a cameo yeah kaido the main villain of this arc he appears for a cameo the show appears a lot more than he does and he appears for like three pages yeah and the Straw Hats, well, most of them anyways, who appear in this chapter, most of whom don't do anything. They really want to do something, just can't. And, of course, the Kenochi basically wants this thing, but she can't do anything at all. Yep. So, yeah, that's really it for this particular review. Stay tuned. I'm going to have six more videos coming today. Basically, two comic corners, two more anime reviews, and two manga reviews. Next thing I'm going to do, a comic corner. Yep. But see you in the next video. Bye.